So now we are going to discuss about the characteristics, the properties of some special um, compounds which are formed with respect to some special elements which is hydrides, oxides and halides. When it comes to the concept of hydrides, hydrides are basically uh, you know those compounds, um, those element, elements of different groups uh, form um, chemical bond with hydrogen then these compounds are known as hydrides. Now hydrides are classified into three major categories. Number one is the ionic hydrides, number two is the covalent hydrides, and number three is the intermediate hydrides. So if you talk about the ionic hydrides, these are the hydrides which are formed with group one and group two. These are the hydrides which are formed with elements of group one and group two A. Elements of group 1A and 2A form ionic hydrides with uh, uh, hydrogen and their stability is in such a manner that as I previously mentioned in the video that um, they, their stability is The strength of their bond is strength of their bond. The strength of their bond is strength of their bond down the group from top to bottom. Strength of the bond down a top to bottom is increased. Strength of the bond from top to bottom is a strength of their bond from top to bottom is actually decreased. Reason behind it is that the reason behind it that's why their strength of bond down from top to bottom is uh, decreased is that. When we move from top to bottom, the size of the atom increases due to which the stability of the atom decreases and reactivity increases. As a result of increase in the reactivity, there would be weaker bonds formed. On the other hand side, if we talk about, uh, you know, if we talk about the other aspect of, um, you know, um, hydrides which is the intermediate compound. Intermediate compounds are basically only of two types when hydrides form a bond with magnesium and calcium then uh, at that moment they form intermediate hydrides which have properties between ionic and covalent hydrides. Now when it comes to covalent hydrides these are the hydrides uh, which are from group 3a to 8a sorry from group 3a to 7a which form bond with hydrides. When elements from group 3A to 7A form a bond with hydrides, then at that moment these are considered to be the covalent hydrides. Uh, now these covalent hydrides are the one in which the hydrogen behaves as a positive ion, while in ionic hydrides the hydrogen behaves as a negative ion. Right? So in covalent hydrides from group 3A to group 7A, if we talk about the general characteristics such as stability. Let's talk of, start with stability. So stability increases from left to right in the period and it decreases from top to bottom in the group. It decreases from top to bottom in the group. The reason behind it is that from left to right the electronegativity is increased and from top to bottom the electronegativity is decreased due to which from group 3a to 7a in from left to right there would be the increase in the bonding capability and from upside to downside from top to bottom there would be decrease in the capability so in that sense this is the trend which is followed with hydrides of covalent bond now um, the most stable hydride most stable covalent hydride is the one which is formed with hydrogen which is with chlorine which is hydrogen fluoride reason behind it is that hydrogen fluoride is having the highest electronegativity in the entire periodic table and when electronic difference is created, electronegativity difference is created, electronegativity difference created is the highest due to which electronegativity difference created 
being highest cause us to create cause us to give and uh, you know more stable more stabilized bond due to which the hydrogen chloride is then uh, you know able to be a stable compound but if you talk about uh, the least stable compound the least stable compounds are thallium lead and bismuth with hydrides when they form bond with hydrides they form the least stable compounds right and on the other hand side we talk about the characteristics of uh, you know group 1a and group 2a due to which uh, now this is basically the trend followed in terms of hydrides but if we talk about the trend followed in terms of halides it is a bit different such that halides are also having three major categories uh, which includes the ionic halide uh, the covalent halide and another category which is known as the polymeric halide polymeric halides are those in which the halides um, or the halogens basically perform as the acting link between two major uh, elements for example in case of uh, HClO3 in HClO3 fluorine is the polymeric halide HClO3 called fluorine is a polymeric halide and uh, if we talk about you know the characteristic of um, let's start off with uh, you know the ionic halides hyaluronic halides are basically uh, those halides when halogens form a bond with, uh, with uh, elements of group 1a and group 2a then it is known as ionic halides and ionic halides have a similar trend that uh, their chemical properties are uh, their properties are you know their stability their melting point their boiling point is decreased from top to bottom and uh, um, the general stability of the atom is increased because the stability of atom being increased causes the bond to be less um, stable due to which there will be a decrease in the melting and boiling point decrease in the um, you know stability of bond but increase in the stability of the atom itself right so this is a major concept followed over here apart from which when it comes to group 2a group 2a is uh, also forming a bond with halides but uh, the bond which is formed with element of group 2a um, would be you know uh, more stronger because reason behind it is that when we move from group 2a group 2 has got two electrons to donate to the halides in order to form the bond due to which more number of electrons donated will gain will cause to have more amount of uh, you know um, stability provided for example sodium has only one electron to donate to sodium fluoride but if we take up the example of magnesium fluoride so magnesium fluoride has got two electrons to donate to two fluorine atoms due to which this compound would be more stable than sodium fluoride right so this is a basic example on the other hand side if we talk about the characteristic of intermediate uh, halides there are certain intermediate halides from group 2a uh, for example strontium and barium which when form a uh, bond with uh, which when form a bond with the halogens cause to form intermediate halides which are characteristic between ionic and covalent halides um, so in that sense they have both metallic as well as non-metallic characteristics now when it comes to the halides forming bond with um, you know forming a covalent bond with other non-metals from group 3a to group 7a we have got uh, plenty of uh, you know trends followed but again their stability is dependent on a number of factors number one is the trend, general trend in terms of electronegativity which is followed and second electronegativity trend and second is the oxidation state which we are going to consider over here 
when it comes to the electronegativity trend if we talk about the electronegativity difference electronegativity tends to increase from left to right for the halides but the electronegativity difference from left to right is decreased for halides and it, what does that mean it means that if we consider electronegativity of uh, you know general trend of electronegativity that basically increases from left to right from boron to fluorine but if we consider the electronegativity difference trend then that would be uh, an inverse of the electronegativity trend because in electronegativity difference we are taking the difference of the two electronegativities if we consider boron and fluorine then the electronegativity difference would be highest and if we consider fluorine with fluorine then that electronegative difference would be zero due to which there would be a non-polar compound form in that sense um, electronegativity difference would be decreased from left to right due to which bond stability would be decreased from left to right as a result of bond stability would be decreased from left to right uh, there would be you know less um, stronger compound from left to right formed in terms of halides but if we move from top to bottom then if we move from top to bottom then electronegativity difference would be increased because electronegativity would be increased for the halides as a result of which the electronegativity being increased electronegativity being decreased and electronegativity difference being increased will cause to form a more stable bond due to which from if we move from left to right from group 3a to 7a the bond form would be more stable and if we move from top to bottom from boron to uh, thallium then bond form will be more stable and from uh, left to right that would be less stable so in that sense this is the general trend from second is on the basis of oxidation state if you are having higher oxidation state then there would be a less covalent bond form if you are having lower oxidation state then there will be more covalent uh, if there is lower oxidation state then there would be an ionic bond form when there, whenever there is lower oxidation state and if there is higher oxidation state then there is covalent bond form let us take an example of lead with fluorine if you are having pbcl2 lead dichloride in lead dichloride the oxidation state of lead is plus 2 while in lead tetrachloride or lead chlorate the oxidation state of lead is plus 4 rather than plus 2 so oxidation state is greater in lead chlorate or ppcl4 due to which lead chlorate acts as covalent compound while lead chloride acts as ionic compound so it's the difference of electronegativity as well which determines the ionic and oxidation character uh, ionic and covalent character on the behalf of oxidation state another good example of this is uh, difference in electronegativity in terms of uh, you know ionic bond for example if you are having two compounds aluminum fluoride and aluminum chloride these are the two compounds that we are going to discuss aluminum fluoride and aluminum fluoride let me just erase it a bit aluminum fluoride and aluminum chloride now when it comes to the structure of both compounds aluminum chloride is generally having aluminum chloride is uh, you know having less electronegativity while aluminum fluoride is having more electronegativity as a result of more electronegativity of so aluminum fluoride within the structure of aluminum fluoride fluorine is basically having higher electronegativity than fluorine due to which the electronegativity difference is more in aluminum fluoride than aluminum chloride because aluminum chloride is having less electronegativity difference and here the electronegativity difference in aluminum fluoride is less and uh, electronegativity difference in the aluminum fluoride is high due to which aluminum fluoride being higher electronegative differentiated highly electronegative differentiated then at that moment it would be having ionic bond and aluminum fluoride would be having a covalent bond this is a common a thing we need to understand after which we if we talk about oxides I'm not going to discuss uh, oxides in detail because uh, it, it's itself you know a very vast topic a very an entire chapter can be written on 
oxides, uh, their you know uh, the the capability to form bonds. So we are just going to discuss their acidic, basic, and amphoteric properties. So if we talk about oxides, when um, you know non-metals form oxide, when non-metals form oxide, they form acidic oxides. All the non-metals which are above this stepping line, this is the stepping line which determines uh, whether there is a non-metal or whether there is a metalloid, right? Let me just read all other stuff. Right? So here, over here, this is a stepping line, okay? And uh, above the stepping line, we are having all the non-metals. And these non-metals, uh, are when they react with oxygen, they cause to form acidic oxides. When they such that when they dissolve in water, these acidic oxides release acid due to which these are known as acidic oxides. But if we talk about metals reacting with oxygen, when metals react with oxygen, then they form basic oxides. Such that these basic oxides, when dissolved in water, form strong bases. And their basicity increases from top to bottom, as I previously mentioned, and their um, you know acidity uh, depends on the oxidation state. Higher oxidation state uh, determines higher oxidation state means higher um, higher acidity, right? Higher oxidation state means higher acidity in uh, non-metal oxides or acidic oxides, right? And on the other side, if we talk about metalloids, when metalloids form a bond with oxygen, then they form, when metalloids form a bond with oxygen, they form amphoteric oxides, which means they, these amphoteric oxides behave as acid when they react with base and behave as base when they react with acid. For example, if you talk about aluminum, aluminum is, aluminum oxide is an amphoteric oxide, silicon oxide is an amphoteric oxide, germanium, arsenic, um, gallium, antimony, a tellurium, acetine, are as well as polonium. Polonium as well, even though it is a metal, but it is also an amphoteric oxide when it forms a bond with oxygen. So these are some, um, you know, um, compounds which are formed whenever there is the, you know, a reaction of oxygen with uh, these compounds. They possess an acidic basic and sometimes acidic and basic four characters. Uh, hydrogen also behaves as a, an amphoteric oxide when it reacts with oxygen. Uh, as we are already known about H2O, um, H2O is basically having uh, uh, an amphoteric characteristic that here H2O, uh, you know, when reacts with oxygen, it causes to create an amphoteric oxide because it has a proton as well as it has an OH group, due to which it creates an amphoteric condition such that when it reacts with acid, it releases its, uh, when it reacts with acid, it acts as base by donating OH, and when it reacts with base, it, re it donates its proton by acting as acid. So in that sense, this is how it all works. Um, that's the basic concept about it, and hopefully we'll meet in another video.